Welcome to our service today. We are going to focus on the subject of last day living. What it means to live in the last days and also to the question of how do we live in the last days. Let's pray together before we get into the word. Father God, we, we just call on your leading and your guiding this morning. We know that you are present here we ask that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead and guide as we understand how we ought to be living in the last days. Bless each one. Bless me as I share your word. And I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will uh, work in me and through me today as I share your word with your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to share with you a very well-known scripture and that is John 14 verse 3 so John 14 verse 3 if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also last day living how should we live as we understand the times that we are living in and as we head into the last stretch of earth's history i believe that we are living in the last days and i'm sure you believe the same while we know about the events of the last days matthew 24 details all of those but what's more important is how would you and i need to be living in the last days just let's say for the sake of a point that if we knew that jesus was coming back tomorrow let's say at 3 p.m of course we know this couldn't be the case because jesus said no one knows the day or the hour of his return but for the sake of a point let's say that we knew that jesus was coming for us at 3 p.m. tomorrow. What do you think you'd be doing at 2.45 p.m. tomorrow? Would we be experiencing uh, a range of, of emotions? Some would be anxious, others would be excited. Some would be nervous. Others would be rallying around family and friends to be ready and um, and sharing the word, wouldn't we? I think too that we may even have our Bibles all open in front of us. We'd be praying, we'd be singing worship songs, we'd be sharing the gospel all the same. Possibly we'll invite as many people over to try and convince them about Jesus' return because we're running out of time. I hope we are, would be. Well, we don't know when Jesus will return. Matthew 24, 36 says, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So we do not know the time, neither should we set the times or the dates of his return. Rather, we should live every day as though it were our last day. Because one day it will be. We should live every day as though it were the day that Christ could come back. Because one day he will. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2. And the Bible says, For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night verse 6 so then let us not sleep as others do but let us be alert and sober verse 11 therefore encourage one another and build up one another just as you are also doing the apostle paul who wrote these words um, expresses what it would be like 
in the last days. It says that the coming will be like a thief in the night. But he also highlights five um, areas that we should be cognizant about. The first is not to fall asleep. The second is to be fully awake. The third, to be sober. The fourth, to encourage. Fifth, to build up. So the question I want to ask you today, how should we be living? I'm going to make reference to these five points that the Apostle Paul makes. The first is then, do not fall asleep. Therefore, we need to be prepared and believing in him. We should have to be in a state of readiness. You would recall the, uh, the parable of the ten virgins. Five of them were called to be wise and the other foolish. The five foolish virgins, virgins they fell asleep. It was not that they were not interested. It was not that they had not accepted the invitation. It was not that they had other plans. It was not that they had forgotten their lamps. They had their lamps with them. They even had the oil in the lamps. But you know, they fell asleep. And also, they did not have enough oil. Have you fallen asleep? You know, what about... You prepare yourself Saturday night to watch a movie and you get the movie all set up and ready. You have some snacks there to go with the movie and you sit down hoping to enjoy this, this wonderful movie that you've been looking forward to. The movie starts and 10 minutes later you drop off to sleep. My sister was like that and it was quite interesting just watching her but also annoying in another sense because when she wakes up, she wants to know what happened, what happened. And then we've got to rewind the video to show her the bits that she missed out on. What about you? Have you fallen asleep? Have you perhaps given up hope? Have you perhaps allowed the things of this world to take priority over your readiness? So how do we prepare? How do we not fall asleep? Firstly, I'm going to suggest today that you make time to spend with God each and every day. Have that quiet time with him. You and him alone. Whether you do it first thing in the morning or whether you do it sometime during the day, but you need to allot a certain time to spend in quietness with your God. So friends, by spending time with God, not just reading, but contemplating, studying, and then applying it to our, our daily lives, and also being obedient to the Word. We also need to be spending time in prayer. We need to become intimate with our God. We've got to share everything that uh, we experience in our daily lives with our God. Share with him what's on your heart. Share with him what's troubling you. Share with him your joys. And this is part of being ready. The second point that Paul makes is that we need to be fully awake or alert as he puts it. So being awake is the opposite of being asleep, isn't it? We are not simply to keep one eye open spiritually, but we need to be fully awake, completely committed to serving Christ. I remember we were going on a, on a road trip to Brisbane, um, taking one of our daughters back to Brisbane. At the time, we were living in Wangaratta, and it was about late the evening, 7 o'clock, when she decided, we've got to leave now. We've got to go 
leap for Brisbane. I try to convince her that now let's have a, a, a bit of a rest and then we can travel when we're feeling a bit fresher. No, 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 she said. I want to get onto the road right now. We packed up, got into the car. However, we needed to go to Geelong to go and pick up some stuff for her and then head off to Queensland. Into the car we got, uh, drove down to Geelong, picked up what we needed to, drove back all the way past Wangaratta and on our way through to um, Queensland while well, we were heading through New South Wales and then to Queensland. But just as we were approaching Wangaratta, so just beyond Benalla, Elena dropped off to sleep, my daughter had dropped off to sleep. And as I was just approaching Glen Rowan, all of a sudden the road was, had about what seemed to me like 10 kangaroos in the road. I had a split second decision to make. Do I put on the brakes? Do I swerve? Do I keep going? But as it was, I needed to put on the brakes. And as I stopped sharply and then swung to the left and then to the right, Elaine woke up. And I tell you what, from that moment onwards, they were wide awake as we drove uh, on our way through to Sydney. So fully awake means being awake, being alert, understanding the role of Satan, knowing the difference between willful sinning and sinning, understanding Christ's sacrifice on the cross, understanding his forgiveness for you, understanding your dependence on him every day in all matters of your life, not only when you are in trouble. It is interesting that we as humans often reach out to God when we are in trouble. But when things are going really well, we seem to forget about God or we put him or move him into the background. But friends, today I want to encourage you to be fully awake. Satan, our adversary, wants to attack you. He wants you to be lulled into the sense of complacency and not to worry and to create doubt that maybe I have lots of time before Jesus comes back and have time to prepare. The other aspect that he draws our attention to is to be sober. What does it mean to be sober? A drinker may think that he's sober after having one or two beers, or he may think that he has the capacity and is well aware of the life around him. But you know what? If you are not fully sober, and when you need to make a snap decision, when your reaction time needs to be split second, this is where, when you're not sober, you're not able to make those microsecond decisions. And this could mean life or death while driving. So God requires us to be sober, completely sober, completely making the right decisions. Decisions to be healthy, decisions to serve God fully, fully committed, to love others, and also to shun the devil. Let's have a look at a few scriptures that speaks to uh, being sober. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verses 8, the Bible says, Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Why? Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. The King James Version puts it this way. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Still in Peter, but chapter 4, verse 7, it says, And the end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit, 
for the purpose of prayer. So what does he call us to be? Of sound judgment and sober spirit so that we can be praying meaningfully, sincerely and purposefully. Another verse is found in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2 where it really talks about the ordination of or the requirements for the ordination of deacons and elders and it says a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife but what does it say next it says to be vigilant sober of good behavior given to hospitality and apt at teaching so here again being vigilantly sober sober of good behavior go with me then to romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 and verses 3 where the bible says for through the grace given to me i say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think but to think so as to have sound judgment as god allotted to each a measure of faith so he says again sound judgment let's go back to titus chapter 2 and verses 2 and listen to what the bible says here that the older men be sober serious temperate sound in faith and in charity so again this word sober but also to be temperate moderate balanced and sound in faith a strong faith and also to be patient notice what first corinthians chapter 8 and this is 9 says So 8 verses 9, um, my pages are sticking a little bit here. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. So he brings out this, this, this concept of us being, or could be, a stumbling block to someone who is weak. So friends, if you and I are not sober, if we are not of sound judgment, if we are not vigilant, if we are not uh, temperate, we could cause a weaker person to stumble and to be weak in their faith. The next aspect that Paul brings out is to encourage one another. Notice what 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11 says it says therefore encourage one another and build up one another just as you are also doing so the church thessalonica they were encouraging they were building one another up but paul was encouraging him to continue to be doing this to continue particularly as we are in the last days so as you and I live in the last days, what ought we to do? We need to be encouraging one another. We need to be building up one another. And when we do this, Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So we need to be there to build up one another and to strengthen one another so that each can experience this beautiful promise that God gives us in Isaiah. Another verse is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. It says, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to what? To love and good deeds verse 25 not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another 
all the more as you see the day approaching. The, the King James puts it this way, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Another version puts it, let us stir one another towards love. Now, I know in the Aussie context, if we talk about stirring one another, it is not for love, is it? It's about, you know, having a go at someone. But here, the Bible says, let's spur one another on. What does that mean? To encourage one another towards love for one another, good deeds. But it also reminds us not to give up meeting together, fellowshipping, worshipping together. Because when we um, start to avoid meeting together, what happens is that you become cold. Your faith weakens. And as we live in the last days, we need to be meeting even more so together. Yes, I do realize that currently we're not meant to be meeting as churches, but we have this medium, the online, where we can fellowship, we can meet together. Hopefully, this will change um, in the not too near future. Friends, we can better serve the Lord when we are awake and sober. And when we encourage other believers, when we build them up, when we encourage them, their end time living will be a better one. But notice something really significant that Paul is teaching here today. He's saying, when we meet together, that the Christian life is not intended to be a solo effort, but rather it is a team sport. We are all together to encourage one another, to spur one another on, and to build one another up. So coming to building up, Back in Romans chapter 14, verses 19, the Bible says, So then, we purpose the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. So here are two areas of teaching. One, for making peace. So in last days, in the last days, our living should not be caught up in criticizing being judgmental, not loving one another, pushing others aside, creating conflict. No, it is all about peace, making peace, being peaceful. And while we're being peaceful, we need to be also building up one another. In Hebrews 13 verses 3 it says, but encourage one another day after day as long as it is called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin so friends you have your opportunity the bible says don't wait until tomorrow don't wait until next week now now is the time to build one another up to encourage one another and each other Notice what Ephesians chapter 4 says. Ephesians chapter 4 and uh, verse 29. And the Bible says, Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for what? For edica education, edification, according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear. What does the Bible teach us here about last day living? That we should watch what comes out of our mouths, what we speak, what we say. It is so important. So let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. The words need to be good for edification. What is edification? Building up. So it is so important for us to be living 
right as we go into the last days. Again, still in Ephesians chapter 4, but verse 15. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. So here again, Paul reminds us, whatever we speak, whether it be the truth, but we need to speak it in love. And when we do this in love, we're encouraging, we are building up our fellow believer. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, and maybe we'll read 14 as well, uh, the Bible says this, it says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, but reaching forward to what lies ahead. In verse 14 he says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So here Paul is saying, last day living not only must you be awake, not only must you be sober, not only must we not sleep, not only must we encourage, not only must we build up, but we need to forget about what's in the past, only learn from the past, but don't live in the past. But he says, press forward to the goal. What is the goal? The coming of Jesus Christ. Being ready, being prepared for that wonderful prize of Jesus coming to take you and I to live with him forever, for eternity. So our goal must be to live for Christ and looking forward to our future eternity with him. So friends, how are you living your life in these last days? I trust that you have been encouraged today through this message to live your life differently as shown by scripture as we've seen through scripture today yes jesus will return at any moment the bible tells us like a thief in the night this should motivate every believer to live a life of devotion live a life of service and of encouragement to others as we look forward to this wonderful day when Jesus will return to come and fetch each one of us. So God bless you as you reflect on how you are living in the last days. May you be encouraged to keep your eyes focused and fixed on Jesus Christ who will lead you and guide you into a better living. So God bless you.